I don't care. Whatever. Oh, we are back. We are live and we are with a friend. I am Joe Dove, the host of the Captain's Quadrant. And my co-host is Jason Roy Gaston, who is once again transmitting from an undisclosed location. It may or may not be the Romulan neutral zone. I have no comment. Oh, okay. Very well. And with us today is a very special guest, Matthew Kaplowitz from Trek Untold. Welcome, Matthew, to the Captain's Quadrant. Hey, Joe. Hey, Jason. Thank you guys for having me today. I I had no say in the matter, but it's good that you're here. (laughs) This is a geocracy here. It (laughs) is. No, 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 no. no. You're my co-host. We also also call it a dictatorship. No, 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 no. That's not what this is. (laughs) Come on, man. Don't embarrass me in front of the guest. (laughs) Uh, We're here to talk about Lower Decks, as you saw by the thumbnail. We're very excited to get into all things Star Trek especially Lower Decks, because it's so much fun. And I know with those of you who watched it, you guys had a lot of fun. So, you know, we're going to get into all things Star Trek. Let us hop into this episode summary. And it's a quick one. And I'll read it because I know it's so, so close for you, Jason. <laughs> I guess you're, gonna, you're already like up on the screen. I know. I'm, I'm ready. I'm oh, ready. Yeah. Drop that thing. Do it. Oh, my man. You're... All right. You Prepare. doubt me. Prepare. No, I don't doubt you. dare you. No, never. Power has gone to your head. No, I have no power. I'm just kind of (laughs) here. Oh, let's pull up that beautiful bean footage. Any any day now would be nice. It's loading. I don't know what happened. Oh, it's loading. And uh... (laughs) there Ah. we go. The hedonistic outlook of a Beta Z delegation infects the crew. Very good synopsis. A very good reading. Yes. And let us go into First Contact. Thanks. So this is the segment of the show, since uh, this might this is your first time here with us, Matt, where we give our really quick overview of the episode and what we thought of it quickly. So I'm going to start with Jason so he can beautifully give you an example, and then we'll go to you. So uh, my overview is I thought that this was a very low stakes but very slice of life episode. I enjoyed it immensely because it has my brand new favorite character in Star Trek, and that is Talyn, who is just amazing, funny without even trying. I I loved it. I will (laughs) save the rest of it for later. But yes, it was it was great. All right, Matthew. This was a really cool Tlin centric episode. Uh, really finally fleshed out her backstory, which we've been waiting to hear a little bit more about. Uh, and for me, I will admit it might have been a little simplistic at times with where the story started and where it ended. Um, it might have been a little too obvious at moments also, but it was still a fun ride. And it's always a good time seeing Beta Zeds running around doing their crazy things. Uh, there's a lot of really, really great moments in this. Uh, and yay, Lower Decks. More Lower Decks is always good. <laughs> Lower decks. <laughs> that was perfect timing, Jason. And we didn't even practice that. It just worked out. That was. That was. <laughs> we're we're like maybe maybe we're telepathically communicating. Is that what it is? Read my mind. No, not that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't read mine. <laughs> uh, I thought. Oh was... God! <laughs> I warned you. I warned you. No, <laughs> oh. that's for OnlyFans. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I'm back. <laughs> I'm strangely into it. Sorry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, I thought this was a lot of fun. The backstory was amazing, but there was a little teeny tiny cool thing that I loved, and that was the callback to when Roxana Troy was going through this in Next Generation, and it's the 36th anniversary of Next Generation. So happy birthday, Star Trek TNG! And what a way to celebrate uh, 36 years of Star Trek TNG and reminding me that I'm older than a TV show that doesn't uh, age well. So, uh, woohoo! <laughs> All right, so let's hop into the pros and cons. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. 
All right. So we'll start off with Matthew. <laughs> Matthew's like, why did I agree to come on the show? No. <laughs> I ask I that it. every week. <laughs> come on, guy. So go ahead, Matthew. Tell us your pros and cons of the episode. Uh, I think I'll start backwards here and I'll start cons. I, like I said in my little quick synopsis, I kind of felt like it was a little too oversimplistic in this one. Uh, while there was the, the subplot, the B plot of Boilermer hanging out with the security team, it felt like so far removed. And yes, it, with lower decks, everything gets tied together at the end. But this one felt just like really kind of far and away for a while. And it felt very neglected throughout the episode. Um, and the story itself, it, it was like, you know, it's, it's only a 22 minute show, essentially. Mm-hmm. And this even felt kind of sparse at moments. It kind of still felt like maybe there could have been more to it. Um, so little simple missing a bits here and there, I guess. But pros were seeing everybody wild and out. Uh, I loved a lot of the little Easter eggs that were popping up in this one. Um, and more Tillin is always good. I mean, I was I wasn't sure if I was really on board with Tillin as a character, to be honest, when season first began. Uh, but she's really grown on me in this one, I think cemented me into really liking this character a whole lot more and accepting her as now being part of this crew, hopefully for more than just this season. Um, so yeah, for the most part, a lot of good laughs. Uh, I enjoyed watching the replicators go to hell and, uh, this you beat up a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, your pros and cons. well, my pros of course, is that I think that more happened in this 22 minutes than we've seen in a, an hour-long Star Trek series in a very long time. So the pacing was magnificent. Uh, Dr. Ta'ana was <laughs> hysterical, the way she just completely lost it and was going to go eat the Beta Zeds. Oh, yes. uh, I, I honestly was, at first I was like, well, the Cations used to hunt and eat the Beta Zeds. And then I, I was like, okay, that's, I accept it now, it's fine. <laughs> I loved that they are humanizing the senior officers of the Cerritos this year. Uh, we we got this wonderful arc with Ransom investing his time into making sure that Mariner can be the best he can, that she can be. And now we're seeing this wonderful new side to Shax, which we've known he's been more than just a big meathead for a while now. But the fact that he has made it his mission to not only protect the crew's bodies, but also to protect the crew's Uh, mental health as well is such a great message and it just brings this new side to Shaxx that just makes him this big lovable teddy bear and I I thought that not only was that a pleasant wholesome surprise but it's a wonderful message as well that your mental health is important and somebody like Shaxx who will kick your ass in two seconds if you pull a phaser on his bridge and will, you know, torpedo you into oblivion if you blink at him wrong, also understands the value of good mental health. And so I, I, that's my biggest pro this week. Uh, despite the fact that I actually did love this episode, Shaq's and, and mental health awareness. Great. Yeah. Great yeah, job, Lower Decks. Uh, to Lynn, as I said, is hilarious. I love the interplay between the three, uh, but be- uh, almost called the Majorans, between the three Beta Zeds. Um, it was a bit predictable. That is my con. Uh, I really thought that some of the crew's shenanigans were kind of animal housey and a little bit, you know, beneath them. This this was basically um, lower decks version of the naked time and the naked now, which is fine. It, it it was fun. It was a little bit juvenile, but it was fun. And the backstory on Talin, I thought was great. And I do like the fact that they're making Freeman a uh, somewhat competent officer again, because there for a while I was getting worried. But there we go. That's it. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, uh, I agree. concur. I had a lot of fun and I really appreciate the cameos. Um, the young woman from Saturday Night Live. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember her name. And the woman, if you guys remember her name, she was not Amy Poehler, but... Uh, yeah, Are you talking about uh, the Betazoids? Yeah, the Betazoids. There were three. The yeah, th- so it was Janelle Javis, uh, right. Rachel Dratch, and uh, Wendy Malik. There we go. Perfect. Oh, fun. I had no idea. Yeah, I recognized <laughs> the voices right away. I was like, oh, that's awesome. The show. And then I didn't because I was making the, yeah. the synopsis that took forever. That's, that's, that's amazing. The, um, oh, gosh. Uh, Debbie James Downer. Davis Debbie like, Downer is a Betazoid. Yeah. Debbie Downer. That's what she was like. What is she doing? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so weird. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say Matt? It's still weird. What? 
it's just so weird hearing Rachel Dratch like doing Star Trek because like she's especially in the last few years she started doing a lot more voiceover work and yeah. she has a voice that's just so recognizable, right? That, like Debbie Downer, you know, it's it's a it's sort of voice that she has. It's bizarre just like hearing that in a Star Trek show. <laughs> it almost yeah. like long. Uh, I'm a little picky about my voices and Rachel Dratch is one of those voices that is it is just so particular. Uh, and, and Wendy Malick, you could say the same thing about Wendy Malick really only does one voice and that's her voice. Right. But it still has a lot more range to it than Rachel Dratch quite often. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought she did a fantastic job and they were badass. They had like batons that were electrocuted. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, lipstick amazing. batons. Yeah, yeah, lipstick batons. They were like, electronic <laughs> lipstick batons. It was awesome. Perfect uh, Betazoid weapon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I especially love the little Romulan cameo. Oh, they didn't come through the neutral zone. Oh. Let, let us go to Sector 4. We <laughs> will lurk there. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that the beta said, um, as Ernesto calls them, MILFs. And what's up, everybody? I want to say hi to Geek Filter, Ernesto. <laughs> Of course, Cosmic Mom. What up, Mom? And Cosmic Mom is like it, it, she's moderating the chat right <laughs> yeah, now. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Val's, by the way, hey, what up? What up, though? Um, so yeah, they they were badass. The they actually had some information on the mysterious spaceship that's going around obliterating other ships. We hadn't seen that. We missed it greatly, and it was quite amazing to know that the Beta Zeds had some of the deets. Because, you know, usually they're just kind of diplomats and, and mediators. But having that aspect of, hey, we're going to be spies and badass, too, was like, oh, OK, maybe they could throw down with the Tal Shiar. That's the Betazoid spies would be the best spies in the world or best be... spies in the universe, if you ask me. Because they could read your mind. Yeah. All they have to do is just get within a few meters of the president and be like, yeah, we know everything. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're done here. Got to go. Where are you going? We haven't had pie yet. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I also really enjoyed the 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 whole banter between the three beta Zeds and the captain and the first officer because the amount of hijinks that were happening. Oh yeah, she's hot. Just things going back and forth, and and the utter destruction of the confidence from the first officer because she kind of turned it on. Oh yeah, the hard to get ones are more fun. Oh, I can play hard to get now. I'm done with you. It was like great comedy. I enjoyed every minute. Um, I if really only, enjoyed. The... If ahead. only Picard had been into it, Lou Oxana would have left him alone. <laughs> yeah, that's, maybe that's what it is. Look at that. Yeah. Poor Jean Luc. Um, having her be the, the barmaid, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and of course, uh, when we solved the big mystery of what was causing everything, I thought it was a great pro and kind of discovered by Talyn herself. A great screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> so. Lots of fun there. The, the very, very minor uh, cons for me would be the unfortunate uh, unreturn of Moopsy. Uh, I think that that's something that they should run, run with a little bit more. I, uh, I don't think we're going to see Moopsy again. Not for oh, a long time. It makes know, me this, sad. I think there's a lot of love on the internet for Moopsy, and I think we're going to get a, a, a very positive. Maybe, maybe next season. Maybe, maybe next season, because I, yeah. I don't think they anticipated this response from the internet's. Uh, and I, I think that that's something that they would uh, cash in on. Because, I mean, Murph got a whole new life once people realized how cute it was and how beloved oh, yeah. it became. So th they cashed in on that pretty quickly. Um, the other con for me was the B-plot. I thought I, I know you loved it, and I thought it was interesting, but uh, a little bit more time was spent in it because they had the ship being taken over, and the entire security crew was like in a cubby hidden somewhere. They totally missed the whole thing. It was like... You're not securing anything, guys. <laughs> like your ship is gone. <laughs> what so, Jason said about that is totally true. Like it, it is a great thing that they explained with it that they showed off about mental health. But yeah, it, it really did need a little more to it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's obvious. Uh, just a, I mean, even in the the classic '80s movies when the security guard like had to go to the bathroom, like I can't Terminator Two, which I think it was actually in the '90s, but when he. <laughs> He comes in, he's like, Gibbons, you can't leave the desk like that. And then he's all tied up in the bathroom. <laughs> kind of reminded me of that. It's like they're they're totally oblivious off somewhere else, not realizing that they're in danger. Hello, um, I, I do love the wharf slam poetry, though. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> I would, and, that was unexpected. Yes. And I, and I also was a big fan of Keishan doing the Naruto run when it was time to go uh, to action. Yes. Yes. Oh, I was about no. to mention that. That was fun. <laughs> wow. 
Naruto. I thought it was she was pretty amazing when she was fighting. She didn't even use her hands. She just like oh yeah, that was great, that was awesome, yeah. Man, awesome. And uh, hey, you know what? Hmm. Gripe all you want about the security team being in a closet or whatever. When they got the job done, they, they got the yeah. job done. Yeah, that's totally true. They really handled the business once they found out that the business was good, needed to be handled. So. Uh, that was amazing. But how raunchy did it get in 10 forward when uh, everybody got down to their skivvies and just started going crazy? I, I thought that was a lot of fun. But at the same time, I feel like they, they've done that before. So is it like kind of going back to something they've already done or is it admissible? I think it's just normal lower decks humor now. Mm, it's yeah. going to always be that kind of lowbrow stuff and it will repeat. Uh, mm, the difference yeah. is, you know, if you watch something like Rick and Morty, they always have different settings of different aliens doing the exact same things that are going to be similar. Mm. But in the case of Lower Decks, it's going to always be on on the ship. So there's not really a lot of diversity as far as like where they can take these things or how to just make it look different. Yeah. Well, there was the what was it? The, the hump dungeon last week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they're, they're finding ways to keep keep that joke going week to week. So it's going to be curious to see where it ends up next week. Um. And then the the wrap up was just uh, to Lynn just oh, oh oh I'm good you've made me realize what my problem was so uh, we're all good here it was, just it kind was of... because she was neglecting her mental health yes yes we go back to mental health that's very true but it was it was an interesting thing to notice that uh, you know she was the the cause of all of it and the uh, solution to everything. And I, I, it was weird that it wasn't uh, more to do with the beta Z. So that was kind of a weird thing for me. But let us move on because we have a lot of friends and we're going to fire at will. Fire at will. <laughs> that maniacal laugh is always a hoot. <laughs> um, we're going to go through the comments really quick and then we're going to talk about short treks. So first of all, I, we said our hellos to most folks, but let's get into some of the stuff that was said. Um, <clears throat> so that totally screws with the canon that was set out in the RPG. And I believe they are talking about um, the... The Cajuns eating the... Yeah, eating the, the beta sets, yeah. Okay. And then my mom admits that she's going through Vulcan menopause. And <laughs> we, we've all been there. We're all gals of a certain age. It's yeah. She's the same age as Tavin. So that's uh, a Lynn. So. Mm. Um, Cosmic mm. mom looks great for 62. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's see. We have the other plan is to object the warp core. Yeah. That's Please let me eject the warp core. <laughs> I have been very good. <laughs> I mean, Talyn basically ejected her mental health warp core. In this yeah, moment, yes, right? she did. So, that is, yeah, her did. body of the warp core. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, the collective Romulan size. They were like, oh, 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 yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, Earth women need electric lipsticks. I agree. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Why not? Everybody should get a get an electric lipstick. That's a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> Geek Filter says next season I think it's pretty much locked down. Yeah, that we're gonna get more Moopsy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's gonna be like all Moopsy will be the new character who joins next year. Yeah, I think I'll so. discover Moopsy has has got sentience and Moopsy becomes like a I don't know Moopsy would be a great nurse for Tayana. <laughs> I think. Tiana, yeah, and then she's like eating some of the patients. What? What? He said it was dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Moopsy can eat the bones and. uh Tiana can eat the betazoids. Oh boy. Uh, Ernesto, if Peanut Hamper make a comeback, Smoopsy will too. That's a good point. Because isn't that I like, I, I like Moopsy a lot better than Peanut Hamper. Yeah. But isn't isn't Peanut Hamper part of your theory that uh... Peanut Hamper and Agamus and mm. Badgie. Right. I Badgie. think I think that all three of our artificial intelligences are on board the mysterious alien ship. Hmm. Do you have any theories, uh, Matt, for the mysterious alien ship before we go to the rest of the comments? I, I'm pretty much agreeing with that. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, actually, that's been my theory as well. Uh, it's going to oh. be those guys all joining up. Um, the only other thought I had about it was I, I've seen some discourse trying to figure out what the ship design is based on. And I don't remember who said it, but uh, I know I, I remember like looking at it and thinking like this thing looks familiar as far as Star Trek lore goes, but I can't put my finger on it. And then someone on some of the many social medias that are out there posted 
it looks kind of like the uh, the Terran pain device. Oh, the uh, there, right? yeah, the uh, agonizer. agonizer. Yeah. yeah. Which so is our, our other show you guys should check out called The Agony Booth. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These things work out so well. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Am I the only one that got all area Stark vibes? I guess from the, you know, yeah, from the, the dodging movie. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. She, did, she did do that, yeah. They did it in season one. That's the big orgy thing. And, oh yeah, ew, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. Sean yeah. Farrick knows all about that pose. I'm just saying. Yeah, he's very good at it too. Well yes, done, he is. Sean. Yeah, well done. That's Sean. not that does not come from a place of hate. That comes from a place of sheer admiration. Yeah, because if I could split like that, man, my life absolutely would be different. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so jealous of you, Sean. I can uh, split like the Enterprise D. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Da -da 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 -da. Um, they do have a holodeck. Oh man, imagine. <laughs> the type of craziness they'll get into the holodeck. I bet the holodeck filters were nasty after this episode. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, we got our good buddy, Gig Filter says, no, lockdown means no changes. If they are planned to bring Moopsie back, they will. Animation can't just adjust for fan reaction. Oh. That's that's why, if they did, that's why you'd get the one cell that says, I must go back to my planet. And then, <laughs> do, 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 do. yeah. Oh, oh, so we, we might not get another movie till like six season or maybe in some other verse. Hi, uh, that would be weird. Yeah. Uh, with my luck, Moopsie will work here. So my cosmic mom is in a assisted living home. So yeah, that would be a fun way to clear out the place and <laughs> make room for new beds. <laughs> Send in Moopsie. <laughs> Moopsie. Yeah. <laughs> Moopsie, how are you look cute? Can I pet you? Yeah. Oh dear God. <laughs> it's petting me. It's petting me. Uh, it does look like an agonizer. Yeah, so there's something to that theory as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And our homie, Commander Jace. How are you, sir? I'm late because I've been trying to buy the Enterprise Jigsaw Puzzle, a fun episode. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I didn't know they had a Jigsaw Puzzle. Um, I, I heard a rumor that they may be releasing uh, the Enterprise G. Uh, I want it. I believe. Uh, Trek Hunt, Matt. I want it. Is that what is that what you were saying uh, not too long ago? Uh, I think if I'm unless I'm mistaken, I think Tomy they're doing their very big line of mm -hmm. uh, very expensive Star Trek ships, and I think the G is one of them. Yeah, I want it, but it's going to cost you basically the price of a house to get one, so it's probably not. Uh, yeah, they're going to be very expensive because they're going to be very big, lots of electronics. I don't remember the exact price, but we are talking four figures. Four fig? Oh God! Well. I'd rather get you to trek Long Island than buy that, Jace. That's that's what matters. Are you sure? Wanna... It's a pretty awesome ship. <laughs> <laughs> he wants it. He wants it. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, Ernesto says it looks like Mirror Universe Agonizer, and then everybody loves the Agony Booth. Yeah, yeah. it is a lot of fun and it and is. painful at the same time. It is. Yeah, it's it's yeah. everything pain and pleasure. It's just like Hellraiser. Uh, geek filter, but it also disrupts power like the well probe, so which is in the intro this year. That was your early, yeah, that was my earlier guess. Which who knows, maybe they've entered into an unholy alliance with the with the um, well, the whale people, whatever you call them, the Satians, <laughs> not the Satians, the uh, citations. There we go, citations, free Williams, <laughs> free, <laughs> free Williams. <laughs> <laughs> well said, well said. Uh, there's some. Um, more from Ernesto. We got Jack Quaid did a live in Chicago last year. Did it live in Chicago? Did what live? The split. Yeah. I was gonna oh. say, the split. <laughs> wow. I pay money oh, to see that. Okay. There's <laughs> got to be video of that online. Yeah. I'm going to go Google it. <laughs> well, wait till after the show, please. Uh, I'm already started. Sorry. <laughs> too late. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Geek filter again. Make sure you buy some lower decks physical media. It shows on the old school CEOs that people like the show, and we do not want another prodigy. In that we don't want to happen <laughs> to lower decks what they did to prodigy. Prodigy, yeah. I'm assuming, because I know Geek filter loves prodigy like all of us do. Yeah, yeah, I believe. Make it. sure you buy those yeah. prodigy DVDs as well. Yeah, uh, yeah I got. Is not dead I, anymore. <laughs> I've already got my second uh, set of Prodigy DVDs Blu-rays ordered, so as soon as that second half of the season hits, I'm getting it. 
What do you, do you buy it on like uh, the Jeff Amazon. Bezos? Yeah, the no, Jeff Amazon. Bezos. Yeah, the, the evil, evil Walmart, evil yeah. online Walmart. Where, yeah. where people can buy your book, though, right? Is that what? Yes, they can. Yes. So I'm not going to badmouth it too much. No, you can't. I can't. I got to pull back because that's you're my homie. So I always want you to succeed. <laughs> Um, of course, if you buy it on Lulu, I get a bigger cut. Just oh, okay, so buy it on Lulu. Okay. Yeah, buy it on Lulu. Yeah, Lulu, <laughs> Lulu, Lulu. Uh, Q hurt so good. So that's uh, Jack so Bader. good. And then he <laughs> will send you the pics because apparently he was there. <laughs> All right, please do. <laughs> All right, well, let's hop into this week's episode of Short Tracks Holograms Yay! All the Way Down. This was actually good. <laughs> I compared to the booger episode. This was fantastic. This is a ma- this is masterpiece theater. This is yes. up there with I Claudius, man. <laughs> it's a woman <laughs> epic compared to the other one. If this is the high point in these short short tracks, <laughs> yikes! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming that we're gonna get some more goodies um, for the last couple. I think. I think we got one more after this, oh, according to the more? schedule. Just one more. Yeah. Oh, ouch. Unless there's more episodes that I don't know about, they've only got one more scheduled. Oh, boy. Well, this is definitely the high point of the series. Oh, I, yeah, I yeah. think I actually liked Holiday Party better, but I yeah. really enjoyed this one. It was just pure nostalgia, and I loved it. Wow. N- nostalgia and stupid. Plus, the most unexpected cameo, considering Paramount Plus's shenanigans, is... We got this. We got the Prodigy crew showing up, which is yes. just like, wow! They actually acknowledge that they exist. Yeah, yeah. They they showed up. We got uh, a whole lot of them really quick, but it was weird because it kind of looked like something. It was cut out, right? Yeah, it was cut out, but it was yeah. fine. Yeah. It was fine. I, <laughs> I get the feeling it wasn't meant to be that way. <laughs> oh, personally, because I, I feel like you know, yes, they're they're trying they're they're spoofing the filmation style animation, which was very overly simplistic, but. Mm-hmm. The way they did it here, that was more like South Park style. It's stylistically, it's so different. I feel like it probably was meant to have been animated, either taking the actual CG characters, taking the CG models and having them doing them stuff, uh, or maybe they're getting something else. But I, I don't think it was intended to be with them in those uniforms because it just looks so extra odd, so anachronistic. It just it, doesn't it, even belong. It really did. It almost seems like it was a it was a placeholder special effect until they got whatever yeah. done that they wanted to get done done. But I don't care. We saw the Prodigy crew, and Paramount hasn't completely killed them. Yes, it's gonna be sad. That's their last appearance that we get on the. On the- it oh, is gonna be so. No, I will be so sad. angry. Gonna, I will be gonna, so angry. It's gonna be a Christmas gift because if the if the since the writer strike is over and if they can end the actor strike by paying people what they're worth and what they deserve, we'll be shocked. And then all of a sudden, you know what? We're so happy. We're going to put Prodigy back on. Yay! Yeah. So at least that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I hope so, too. I'm hoping that Paramount just kind of goes, oh, wait, we're out of content. Uh, we got that Prodigy show. Let's just put that back on. Yeah, everybody loves it. I, and I, I do love all the little cameos this week. We had Hammer again, voiced by our friend Bruce Horick. We had uh, the lovely Saru return uh, quickly. And... I, I also hold on. I oh, this answers the question from the very first episode when Saru shows up in his in his 32nd century uniform mm-hmm. in the 22nd century. It's because they reused the animation from this one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so there that's the reason. There it is. There it is. <laughs> it all makes sense now. That's hilarious. Um, and then the cameo that we least expected that wrapped it all up. And I did love, and I want to say a special shout out to Connor Trenier, who was trip, who got to live a little bit longer, uh, live and let die. And he got his just desserts this week, uh, because they had a nod at, uh, the next gen and final episode of Star Trek enterprise <laughs> with that terrible which was an agony booth episode i believe too it was and it was yeah. agony it was, it was agony. that's one of the few episodes that's made me physically angry yeah yeah so i i thought that was kind of poetic justice and then uh everybody's favorite alien showed up at the very very end neelix yay i love that little hedgehog we respect neelix in this house he was an absolute dro- jewel of a being and we love him yeah so Lots of fun had by all, and we got some more comments. Um, so Ernesto's always lurking at Sector 87. 
I know what Sector 87 is. I know what kind of bar that is. And I think Commander Jace knows too. <laughs> yep. Um, and also, no, it wasn't meant to be like that. It was a bit of a nod to Monty Python. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll take that. So that's why I did. Yeah. It, it felt like that. Like, doo, 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 you know, almost like stop motion animation. Next week, we'll be back to Casper Kelly crap. Oh. So I guess he wrote the Booger episode. It, Geek felt, if, oh, I think he just left. Oh, yeah, I think he left. Okay. I think he's been responsible for most of these. Oh. <laughs> which is why the comedy has been so awkward far away from well, everything. <laughs> this episode was written by one of the prodigy writers, I believe. So yeah. it probably this explains was, yeah. why we got Zero and and Rock Talk and Gwyn in this one. Yeah, yeah. this one was was that. Um I think it was Aaron Waki, right? Yeah, oh, I, I think so, he's yeah. Here. Yeah, he's answering yeah. that. He wrote yeah. all the Aaron, so that yeah, it was Aaron's this one. So wow. Yeah, Amazing. Casper, he, his stuff is very surreal and maybe not the best fit for Star Trek. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was kind of a weird. I, I will, I will agree with Jason. I, I think the uh, the one that I liked the most was the one with Spock having the holiday party. Um, really? Yeah. That was. Yeah, this one was not that interesting to me. Like, because all it was was nostalgia. I was like, here's this person, here's that person, here's this person. But the joke got old like right away, and it kept going. Oh. Yeah. Casper I Kelly. disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I I love seeing the onions peeled back and. Not only uh, not only acknowledging all of these wonderful characters from Trek's past, but also just roasting the hell out of these are the voyages. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what the episode. Was. Yeah. That was really the best part. I think was was that opening part, just doing yeah. that. But yeah, it yeah. Was, like, but then it just kept going, and it wasn't even really joking at that point. It was just now let's put this guy in. Now let's put this guy in. There really wasn't <laughs> much of a joke anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they really. But it was it was fun to see Quark, and it was fun to yeah. see. Uh, you know, George Takei return as Sulu. The what? only thing that really made me upset was the fact that they had animated Garrick and didn't get Andy Robinson back. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I, he didn't say a word. He was just there. He did not. He just slurped root beer and that was it. Oh, man. Yeah, that would have been amazing. We love. But we had we had appearances from every generation of Star Trek in this uh, in this one little special. And I thought it yeah. was great. Yeah, definitely a high point. Uh, I think was... the, we didn't get anything from. Uh, no, we did. We had Hemmer from Strange New Worlds. Never yeah, mind. Hemmer was there. Yeah. yeah Bruce was... Horak will do anything, and I love that about him. Yeah, that's. I mean, he he was generous enough to kind of hang out with us for an hour. So yeah, totally. <laughs> oh yeah, he'll 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 hang with any scum. It's, it's oh, great. Hey, come on, man, we're not scum. He, he's like Jesus that way. <laughs> He's wow. not wrong. He's hung out with me too. So oh, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, uh, I think we had so much fun this week. Uh, there's so much to unpack. We got to figure out what's behind this. Is it the whale species, the crustaceans, or something like that? Is it? It's the crab people. It's the crab people. <laughs> crab. It's the butt bugs. <laughs> is it the butt bugs? They, they've or... got their hands up there. You know, Captain. I'm Captain Freeman. That's why I'm so out of character. <laughs> uh, is it? Is it Peanut Hamper and Agamus? Or is it the Breen? And Badgie. It's and Badgie, Badgie, too. And Badgie. I, yeah. forget. I keep forgetting about Badgie. Or is it the Breen? Like I thought. Uh, I think that would be interesting. We did see them briefly in last season. So maybe the Breen are plotting. And, that's and they that. have randomly shown up in the uh, opening sequence as well. Yes, sometimes they're right. there and sometimes they're not, which is yeah. kind of mysterious. Yeah. So hopefully the Breen are there. Uh, could also then, be uh, it could also be William Boimler. Oh, I forgot about William. Yeah, Boimler. we haven't seen William this this entire season, so it could be uh, William in Section Thirty One shenanigans. Yeah, instead of doing the uh, Defiant, they are now yeah. in the teardrop. Uh, yeah, that makes sense too with the agonizer theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does make sense. It does blend. All right. Does anybody want to have any final thoughts? I haven't had any first thoughts yet. Oh, so have some first thoughts. Go for it. <laughs> oh, I was just joking, but yeah, no. I, I know. <laughs> I, I don't have any my, thoughts, as you can see. My <laughs> final thoughts is that the Pontiac Aztec was actually a very underrated vehicle. <laughs> so nothing about this episode of Lower Decks. Very well. Uh, I want to thank you again, Matt, for joining us here in the Captain's Quadrant. Um, thank you guys for having me. We know you are the mastermind behind Trek Untold, but tell people may have not seen your show about your show all right 
Well, Trek Untold is a weekly interview uh, interview series. I was going to say interviewer, but no, that's my job. I'm the interviewer. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, interview. it's a weekly Star Trek interview series where I talk to folks from all across the Star Trek universe, which includes actors, writers, stunt performers, behind the scenes crew, composers, VFX people, comic artists, book authors. Pretty much if you've done anything in the world of Star Trek, I'm going to talk to you at some point. I will hunt you down. I will find you and you will be on my show. <laughs> uh, and uh, this past week, we actually just had another fellow podcaster joining us for the episode. We had uh, Jeff Aiken from the Starfleet Leadership Academy podcast. And I'll give you guys a scoop for who's coming next week. In fact, uh, Ooh. next week, I will be having a rare interview with Leslie Hoffman. And oh, wow. she is uh, a stunt woman who did Star Trek D Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. She was Roxanne Dawson's double. And uh, she's got a lot of good stories to tell from Star Trek and a lot of others from beyond. And uh, if you want to check out the show, it's available on all audio platforms. And it's also available on YouTube and video form at youtube.com slash at Trek Untold. Yes. And we want to make sure to shout out our very special friend, uh, you, Jason, and your show. Make sure you check out our friend, Jace, the Jason Roy Gaston channel at youtube.com uh, backslash at Jason Gaston. And apparently there's a Australian man on your channel. You yes, to- it has all of my it has all of my adorable furry pets on that in that uh, thumbnail right there. <laughs> so Jason is an adorable furry pet. Is that what you say? Yes. <laughs> yes. But come come watch attractive Jason and other Jason. We talk all kinds of stupid things. It is where comedy goes to die. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You guys just did one of my favorite um, thriller slash horror slash oh, yes. sci-fi movies ever in the VHS vault. And that's The Thing. It's one of my favorites. Uh, be sure to check out our friends at Pop Culture Spread, uh, where they're talking about movie and streaming news. We've got uh, your pet uh, is back, your furry pet. Yes. yes. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> you scratch it. If you scratch his belly, he purrs. <laughs> uh, and our buddy Rick. That's uh, Friday night at 6.30 p.m. in the U.S. Uh, it's Saturday in Australia, and that's at YouTube.com backslash pop culture spread. And, of course, my other channel, To Be Seen. Uh, we're talking about horror movies. We're going to go see the creator, and we're going to talk about that next week at one week later. So be sure to check that out. Uh, and that's going to wrap it up. We uh, we're a nice, fine-tuned machine this week. I'm very glad. Indeed. That. Very efficient. Very uh, to Lynn... To Lynn would be proud of us. Yeah, we did the Vulcans proud. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't, please do those wonderful YouTube things. And that is subscribe and give the show a like. It helps us so uh, incrementally and monumentally because your little thumb up and subscription sends it to somebody else and boosts the algorithm and gets other people there. And it explodes into a whole lot of people liking us because we're likable. And it's so much fun to hang out in the captain's quadrant. So until next time, be sure to subscribe, like, share, all those wonderful things. Check out our friend Matthew on Trek Untold, and we will be back next week live in the same place.